I've been racking my brains over all of the updates that we've seen for Luminar Neo, and I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the most significant update we've seen yet. One of the things that I'm most jazzed about with this update is there's something for everybody, whether you're an architectural photographer, landscape photographer, or just looking for improvements in terms of the professionalism of the program itself, there's something in there for you. Now I'm going to be saving what I consider to be the best part of the update until the end of the video, and I think it might surprise you, so stick around for that. But in the meantime, let's kick things off with two very exciting new tools. Straight away as Neo's loading up, you can see that we've got a bit of new branding going on. They've changed the logo. Now, here we are inside the edit section, and you can see we have a brand new tool collection called Landscape. And within that, you can see we've got some existing tools and two new ones, Twilight Enhancer and Water Enhancer AI. So with this image, let's kick things off with Water Enhancer AI. If you wanna learn more about it, we can click on the eye icon for information, and we can also learn more as well, but you don't need to do that because I'm gonna cover it all for you. First of all, I always recommend grab the amount slider for any tool and boost it up because that's just going to give you a good idea of what that tool is doing. Now, as I hovered over the picture there, you can see that we see a mask. Now, that was generated by AI. That's no mean feat because the water area and identifying that is actually quite complex. Now, I've gone in and enhanced water in many of my landscape photos and coming in and masking it all individually, it's very time consuming. So this is a really nice time saver. Initially with the settings at their default, all we're doing is injecting blue into the water, but there's a lot more we can do than that. So with the blue slider, we can intensify that blue, but we also have green as well. So we can make more of a kind of turquoise blue mix, depending on what we want to do. You can move these sliders around to get the color that you want. And then if you feel like it's over intensified, we have this original color slider as well. So if we push that to 100, it's just gonna take away that color change that we made. And we can tweak that until we get the color that we're after. I'm gonna stick with something a little more intense than say I might normally, um, just so that we can get a good sense of what this tool is doing. So currently here's our before and here's our after. After we've dialed in the color we want with these three sliders here, we can then adjust the brightness. So if you want to just lift up that exposure, just brighten up that water, we can boost up the brightness. Look, we can go all the way to 100, far too much, but we can also darken things down, make a nice murky, moody feel. But I feel for this image, because we're in shadow, brightening this up is a nice thing to do. So here's our before, here's our after, and we can always come back to this amount slider afterwards and just reduce that overall effect once we've got it set up the way we want. We also have a contrast slider so that we can intensify that contrast in the water if we want, or if we're wanting just to mute things down, we can actually drop that contrast. If you do that, things tend to get a little lighter and then you can sort of adjust the brightness slider accordingly. As with all sliders, a double click sets it back to its default. Now, you'll notice that we have a little anomaly going on in the water here. So the AI has done a pretty good job of creating a mask for us, but this area here I don't really want, and you'll also notice that the rock just over here has been covered by the mask. So we can actually come in and adjust that. See this refine area here? This gives us access to a lot of control for the mask. So the first three are actually talking about the brush itself. So we can paint more of the mask in if we want to, but I'm not worried about that. What I want to do is actually erase from the mask. So I'll switch over to erase, come in, just click and I can just paint away that rock so it takes it from the rock. We've also got a little bit of bleed over that rock there as well. How accurate you want to get with this is really up to you, but you can just come in and refine things. But I certainly want to take it away from the bottom of the waterfall there. And now if I move my mouse off of the photo, we can see the effect of that change. So here's our before, here's our after. We also have a feather slider. So this is actually really useful. If we compare the edge of the mask, which is very distinct to the actual effect that we're getting, which seems to blend in a bit more believably, what is going on here? Well, that's all to do with the mask feathering. If I zoom into an area, you can see that the line between what is masked and what is not is very definitive. It's a very hard edge. However, the actual effect of coloring that water itself is a bit more softer in transition, and that is because we have a feathered effect of that mask. Now we can boost that feathering up so it's even softer, or if I drop it all the way down, you can more clearly see the hard edged effect. So I wouldn't recommend that you wanna drop that down usually, 
the default setting of 50 is pretty good. And now we've got the overall look of the tool and the mask set up with the way we want, we can come in and reduce the overall amount slider. So if I take that all the way to zero, we can see what we had originally, and I start bringing that up to 100. It's a little over the top, but uh, I don't know. Let's set this somewhere around half, and here's our before, here's our after. Just a subtle little introduction of some blue that makes that water feel a little more inviting, a bit more visually pleasing than what we had before. So the next new tool we've had added, it's another AI driven tool, and this is Twilight Enhancer AI. Again, you can find out information about that tool here, but we just wanna figure this tool out ourselves. I'm gonna grab the amount slider and again, push it all the way to 100. And once the AI's done its calculation, assess the scene, we get to see what that Twilight look is doing for us. So my original shot in the late afternoon, and here we go, here's with that twilight look. That's so cool. In this drop down here where it says mauve, we have the option to change the look. You've got golden, we've got blush, that's a little bit intense. We've got emerald. There are some really nice options for us. So we can just enhance the original blue that was already there if we wanted to. But I'm gonna stick with the default of mauve for this one, just so we can have a play around and get to understand what these sliders are doing for us. So obviously the exposure slider is gonna darken our exposure, which makes sense because we're emulating a darker time of day. There is a lot we can change in here. We've got sky, dawn, scene, water, and mask refinement as well. So let's just go through these one by one. So obviously we can play with the temperature of the sky. So if we wanted to warm things up, we can do that. If we wanted to get rid of some of the magenta and push it more into the yellows and greens, we can do that as well. We've also got this dawn slider here. And what that's doing is actually enhancing along the horizon line and injecting it with a particular color. So if I take the dawn slider away, it actually matches much closer what I had originally in the photo. But as we increase that, that enables us to work with the horizon and imbue it with a sense of color and brightness as well. So we can actually fine tune that horizon line dawn effect really precisely. Now the scene adjustment that we have here is a really great way to control the overall brightness, or not the overall brightness I shouldn't say, but the areas that are in shadow. So currently we have a shaded area, which is pretty much the foreground and this landmass. If I bring that back to zero, you can see that it's kind of getting a little bit too dark for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is actually just take that shade away, it's brightening that back up so that our main subject isn't losing intensity. We can also control the saturation in that area if we want to, and we can also feather that effect off. But I always recommend with feathering, you just want a nice transition, so let's just leave that where it is. If we're wanting to change the water or affect it in some way, we also have this water slider here, and we can make adjustments to the blur and the amount of that effect. But for the ultimate control in water, then you can combine the effect with the Water Enhancer AI. So if I come up and toggle the before, and after of just that one tool before and after, you can see it really is a powerful way to make changes to our landscape photos. The next thing I wanna share with you is a user interface change. If you're familiar with other photo editing software, you'll notice that they all share one thing in common, and that is that the user interface and the background is all neutral. Basically, something that's not gonna interfere with your assessment of the colors in the photo you're working on. In true Skylum style, they like to do things a little bit differently, and for their background, they introduced what they called a dynamic background, which was taking information from the photo you're working on and kind of blurring it into the background. Now, I'm sure you would have seen before the optical illusions where they take a color and put a different color around it, and depending on what colors around that color, your perception of that color changes. So that's what's happening when you put color information around a photo, your eye and perception of the color is being biased by that. So wouldn't it be great if we could actually turn that off in Luminar Neo? Well, thankfully, now we can, let me show you. Just so you can see what I'm talking about, if I jump to the catalog and I open a completely different colored photo, you watch the background. Did you see that suddenly change? And now the border is infused with a bit of green as well. Okay, let's just switch to something else. Watch the background. There you go, it changed. We got a kind of orangey pocket appear over here. So how do we turn this off? We'll come up to the new icon for Luminar Neo. We're gonna click that and we're gonna come to File and Preferences. And here within Preferences, you can see that we have Appearance of the dynamic background is on. I want to turn that off. Currently no change, but watch this when I click OK. 
that orangey pocket that was over there is now gone and we have a completely neutral background. So if I switch back to the photo we were working on before, you'll notice the background no longer changes. And another smaller benefit of that is your processor is now not having to waste resources calculating what it thinks the background should look like based on that photo. Now I'm sure some of you already know this, but I have a whole sister channel dedicated just to architectural photography. Reason being, that is what I do professionally. And in a recent video on that channel, I shared how Luminar's HDR Merge that borrows from the very powerful Aurora engine is really useful for real estate and architectural photography. But there was a problem, and that was that you can only work one set of images at a time. And that's very frustrating when you want a streamlined workflow. But ah, the technicians at Skylum have listened to my request, and we finally have a batch processing option for the HDR merge tool. Let me show you it. So from within the catalog view, I'm going to jump to a folder that contains some bracketed images, all shot on tripod. The only thing that's changing in any of these photos is the exposure. So previously, I would have had to have worked on each set of these photos individually, but now watch what I can do. If I open up the HDR merge tool here, you can see we now have a batch processing option. So we can click on the first of our images, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then just click and drag all of those photos. Now this tool can actually take up to 1000 photos at a time, which is more than what you're gonna need for any project. And of course, I'm showcasing architecture here, but this will also work for landscape photography as well, wherever you've shot a series of photos that you intend to be merged in an HDR style. So we obviously have the same settings available to us as we previously had. The key here is that we just wanna choose batch processing rather than just single merge. And look what Luminar's done for us. It's grouped together all of the bracketed exposures. And so it knows exactly which photos match together. And now all we need to do is just click continue and wait for it to run that processing. And Luminar Neo goes to work for us, crunching that data. So we end up with a folder full of complete HDR merged images. And we can then go in and finesse those TIFF files however we want. As an architectural photographer, I think that is so, so sweet. I'm so happy about that. But I still don't think it's the best thing they've added yet. I'm going to get to that. But before I do, if you don't have Luminar Neo yet and you would like to get it, I've got a discount link in the description below. I do get a small commission from that. It just helps me keep creating free content for you guys, but you also get a discount as well. So that's a win-win for everybody. So what we've seen already, Quantify This is a pretty cool update in itself, but I still don't think we've covered the best thing yet. So what is it that's got me so excited about this update? Well, it all comes down to masking and being able to talk into our image and specify exactly where we want to put these cool creative tools that we have uh, in a really precise way. The thing I'm talking about is available in Photoshop and Lightroom, and it's one of the reasons why I often flip back to those software programs when I'm doing really finessed pieces of work. So what have they finally added that I've been waiting for? Luminosity masking. If you don't know what luminosity masking is, don't worry, I'm gonna put some videos together to cover all the nuances of it because it's one of those things where the full capability and power of what this opens up for us as photo editors might not be immediately obvious. And so I can create more videos around it showing you the nuances of the tool. If you'd like me to do that, just write luminosity masks in the comments below. And then if enough people mention it and request it, I will certainly do that for you. But in this video, let me give you a quick overview of how Luminar has incorporated luminosity masking into the program. Okay, as I said, luminosity masks are very powerful. So I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple today, just so you can get a sense of what they're able to do. So if we look at a before and after of an application of Structure AI, this is a little bit too much over the whole photo. However, what I might want to do is just use it to bring up a bit of detail in those shadow areas only. Well, now I'm able to do that using luminosity masking. So I click luminosity, there's a quick calculation done, and now we get this gradiated slider here. And this represents the brightness values in our photo. Basically, anywhere that's highlighted is affected by the tool. So that's everywhere at the moment. What I would like to do is remove the effect from the highlights. Now you'll see as I start moving this to the left, 
it's taking the mask away from the brighter pixels. So currently that's all of the sky where the sun is hitting the building. It's just removing it. And so now you can see that the mask is only affecting the shadows. One issue that we've got at the moment is that it's very pixelated. It's very abrupt in that transition. We can solve that by grabbing this little arrow icon here and starting to bring that out. That creates a transitional zone between where the mask is active, this area here, where the mask is inactive to the right of that and everywhere in between, it's gonna create a nice soft feather in between. So now if we come out of that luminosity mask and I zoom back out and we toggle the before and after, you can see that that structure AI has only been applied into the shadows, giving us a much better result. Well, what else can we do? Let's suppose we want to intensify the sunlight effect hitting the building here. It's really easy to do with luminosity masks. I'm just gonna jump into the develop tool here so that I can grab the temperature slider and warm things up. And currently you can see that we are affecting the photo globally, warming the whole thing. Well, I just wanna talk into these highlights on the building. So what do we do? Jump into masking, come to the luminosity mask, and one option is to actually grab these sliders and fine tune it until we've selected the area we want. But another really great option we've got is just to come over with our mouse and just click in the area that we want to select. So you can see if I click in different places, the luminosity mask just highlights those areas and adjusts the sliders accordingly. It's really great. And you can of course combine masks as well. So currently we have the area of the building we want selected, but also the sky as well, which I don't. So currently the best way to deal with that at the moment is just to erase that effect from the sky. So we can just come in here with an eraser, get rid of it from the sky, very rough and ready, but we're left with that highlight effect just on the building. So before and after, we can intensify that effect if we want and I've been super rough with my, my masking and erasing, but look, you guys get the idea. It's a really powerful way to work with masks. Now you would have noticed that there is another mask option that's brand new in Luminar Neo as well. Let me show you that because oh, it's honestly, it's truly awesome. Let's just throw another tool in here again. Let's go with Structure AI, and let's say we want to just apply that to the buildings to the side of the Eiffel Tower here. Let's come into masking, and you see that we have Object Select AI. Oh, it's new. So let's click that, and we have the ability to add or subtract objects. So watch this. As I bring my mouse over, that building is instantly selected. We can also come in here. We can grab the balconies if we want. What about the Eiffel Tower itself? That would be an insane headache to try and mask that Eiffel Tower, but we are able to do that. So I'm just gonna select the buildings at the side, as I said, and you'll notice that there's just a little bit of an overlap where it hasn't picked up. Not really a big problem because again, we can combine masks. So I could just come in and paint that little area there as well. But look at this, if I go for a before and after, the buildings at the side of the Eiffel Tower are perfectly masked. So with the addition of these two very powerful masking techniques, we are given even more control over the precision of our edits. And for me, being a perfectionist when I'm working on my images, that is a huge bonus for Luminar Neo. I am very, very happy with this update. Guys, you let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you want me to cover any of these things in a more dedicated tutorial, let me know and I'll get round to that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.